In this episode, we're going to look at the four most important buffering systems in natural waters. The first one is a dissolved inorganic carbon. The second one is a dissolved organic carbon. The third one is buffering imposed by aluminium. And the fourth one is the autocrotolysis between water, hydrogen ions, and hydroxide ions. So in the last episode, we saw that the major ions in the water were a series of metals, a couple of ions, some carbon species, the DOC and the DIC, H+, and its twin OH-. And now we're going to elaborate on the colored species in this picture. So let's start with the carbon species. The DOC and the DIC are formed during the cycling of carbon in the ecosystem. So CO2 is sequestered by plants and trees, it's degraded, and between being biomass and being CO2 again, DOC and DIC are formed. And the DIC actually consists of three different species, carbonic acid, bicarbonate, and carbonate. So to start with the DIC, the dissolved inorganic carbon, the carbonic acid concentration is determined by the CO2 pressure. So the concentration of carbonic acid is the pCO2 times Henry's constant. Bicarbonate is formed from protolysis of the carbonic acid. And we have the equilibrium reaction and to the right the equilibrium equation, where KH2CO3 is an acid-base equilibrium constant. Carbonate is formed from protolysis of bicarbonate and is formed together with H+. So if we combine these three equations, we get expressions for bicarbonate as a series of constants times pCO2 divided by H+, and we get an expression for carbonate, which is a series of constants times the pressure of CO2 and H plus squared. And we can see that the less H plus we have, the more of these two species are going to be present in the water. And we also see that the higher the carbon dioxide pressure is, the more we're going to have. One interesting aspect is the relative fractions of the various species. And in every textbook you see this diagram illustrating the fraction of DIC that is present in a specific form. So at low pH values, most of the DIC is in the form of carbonic acid. At intermediate pHs, we have bicarbonate, while carbonate ions start being dominant only at very high pH values. And it's worth noting that DIC is given in moles of carbon per volume of water sample. We can use these curves to determine the fraction of a specific ion. For example, at pH 6.8, about two-thirds of the DIC is present in the form of bicarbonate. When it comes to DOC, dissolved organic carbon, its most important property is that it works as an organic acid. Because they carry a carboxyl group, and the weak organic acid equilibrium is given as RH is in equilibrium with R- and H+, where R- is the anion to the weak organic acid RH, and it has a simple equilibrium equation. So what is the link between the DOC and the organic acid? Empirically, we know that each milligram of DOC carries 7 to 10 to the minus 6 carboxyl groups. So that means that the sum of RH and R-, that is the acid and the anion, is 7 to 10 to the minus 6 times the DOC value that you get from the lab. And DOC is measured in milligrams of carbon per liter, and a clear water has about 2 milligrams per liter of DOC, while a brown lake has about 50 milligrams per liter of DOC. So combining the above equations, we can get an expression for R-, and that is 7 to 10 to the minus 6 times the measured DOC values times the ratio between Kr and Kr plus H+. Plus. 
So with these equations and the knowledge that the value of the equilibrium constant is about 5 to 10 to the minus 5th, which is close to the value for acetic acid, we can look at the fraction of carboxyl group protolyzed. And plotting this fraction against the pH, we see that at low pH values, a low fraction is protolyzed. That means that most of the organic acids are actually in the acid form while already at pH 6, most of the organic acids are protolyzed, which means that R- is a dominant form. Aluminium has very complicated chemistry, but we have a simplistic model that builds on the assumption that the aluminium concentrations are controlled by ALOH3, and that is a solid that acts as a weak base. The species to accept are Al3+, ALOH2+, and ALOH2+, plus, and they are formed through a series of dissolution reactions with 3, 2, and 1 H+. Plus. If we look at the relative fractions of the species, we see that Al3+, plus dominates at low pH, which we should expect because it requires most H+, plus to dissolve ALOH3. And then we have a logical sequence of the various species. But in practice, the only one that counts is actually Al3+. And if we look at the dissolution reaction, we see that we have a solid as a reactant, and we have water as a product. And Al3 plus can be expressed as Al3 plus equals Kg times H plus 3, where G stands for Gibbsite which is a common name for ALOH3. But the fractions are not the only thing of interest. Of interest is also the total amount of a certain species. And combined with some other constants, we can calculate the total amount. And we should look at the number on the y-axis, 5.4 times 10 to the minus 8 moles per liter. That means that at a pH of 5.5, the total concentration of aluminium is very, very low. Still, Al plus is the most important ones of the different species. And finally, we have the protolysis of water with a common reaction where water acts as a base or as an acid. We have the common equilibrium equation and we can calculate the concentration of OH from that. But we should remember that the OH concentration is always negligible as compared to the concentration of bicarbonate, at least in natural systems. And that has to do with the presence of gaseous carbon dioxide. So to summarize, we have a series of equilibrium equations. The first and foremost is the concentration of bicarbonate. We then have the concentration of organic anions. We have the concentration of aluminium and we have the concentration of OH. And what we can see from all these equations is that they contain measured values, the CO2 pressure and the DOC, a series of constants and the H plus concentration. And that means that they all form part of the buffering systems of the water.